Hello, today we are going to take a look at Goetia, Nine Kings of Solomon by Demonic Games. So this game supports 2 to 4 players, 40 minutes per player, ages 14 and up. What is the game about? You gather resources, contact demons, conjure demons and gain their powers. This game was originally on Kickstarter and they thank their backers here. So what will you be doing? During the construction of King Solomon's temple, word has spread that King Solomon was able to control a demon named Ornias. The people of the world could only imagine what they could do if they possessed such power. Eventually, small groups of people decide to contact, conjure and worship these demons, earning them relics, treasures and demonic powers. With enough time, they would one day become perhaps as powerful as King Solomon himself. All right. Goetia, Nine Kings of Solomon, is a worker placement and resource management game where players attempt to gain worship points from the nine Goetic Demon Kings. When players have formed enough pacts with the demons, the players with the most worship points is crowned the king, the new king. Alright, definitely a darker theme with the, those whole demons, but let's see what it is about. Alright, you have rulebook, video explanation. Via QR code, that's cool. Alright, table of contents, goal of the game. Competing over resources that are needed to com communicate with the nine Goetic Demon Kings. Alright. Here you have the components list. It's a nice thick rule book. I hope it does a good job at explaining. It looks like it's set up, set up, how to play, definition of areas, demons, in the round, demand. Okay. Then questions and answers. Always like it when game come with the f FAQ. Alright. Then here we have the punch boards, I think. Let's get them. Open, shall we? Alright, let's take a look at one of those. Scapulamancy. Is the practice of divination using scapulae or spiel bones? Wow, this divination method that uses animals' sh shoulder blames. Okay. This divination method that uses animals' shoulder blades may be among the most ancient methods of fortune telling. Alright. You sense a demonic presence. Ah, cool. That's probably when you're trying to contact them. Yeah, so let's just flip through them. It's interesting artwork. I like it. It's pretty cool. It sounds very much looks very much like a painting. Ritual, grimoire. Yeah, so in the back you always have the same sentence. And then it tells you what you need to do. Alright, cool. Alright, cool. Just showing you the artwork. Ooh, it comes with a lot of components. So, a lot of packs. What else? Ah, I think these are metal ones. Let's take a look at them. Those are cool. They are thin, but they are hatched. That's neat. Very cool. Definitely gives it a cool feel. Metal coins are always the best. Alright, then let's take a look at these meeples because they look nice. I think these are the followers. I don't remember what they call them. They look neat. They come in four colors because that's the number of players. Very neat, very neat. What else? A ton of cubes. These are smaller cubes. Yeah, all right. In four colors, different from the colors of the followers, as you can see. Then four more followers. I guess these are to be used as backups. Five more cubes, so probably more backups. That's cool. Even more coins. Spare parts. That's a super neat touch. Giving you spare parts for for your game. This I'm not sure what they are. They're just black black discs. I 
guess you really have to read the rules to find out. Of course, you should always read the rules or see the video. Then you have a notepad to record your points at the end of the game, I guess. They are only one-sided. Alright, alright. What else? I think these are reference boards or maybe something else. Okay, the different kings. Let's flip this around. So, here we have round structure and in the back area cost summary. Alright, so you get, let me try to focus this, yeah, that's better. For round structure slash area cost summary references. Quick setup reference, that's welcomed. Alright, and then here you have the kings. These are way more scary. That's what you get for contacting and summoning demons. Let's take a look at one of them. Always play one less resource or darkness. Whenever one of your followers is sacrificed, you get two attention. Followers are resurrected. Cool, you get two attention. Very cool. This art is way more scary than before. Here I guess it's just thematic. Yeah, just a little bit about the king. Packed cards. Alright. These are thin. They are basically cards. Oh, that's a big, big token. Demonic Games Gutenberg. Alright. I think this was the first player token. They talked about it in the rulebook. Alright, then we still have two packs of cards. This game comes back with content, to be honest. Alright. Let's do a little trick. Let's take a look at the small cards. So, Power of Persuasion. Some fluff text, demonic power. Whenever another player recruits a follower, move one of your unrecruited followers from one world's edge to another. A king associated, and those are probably points. Alright. Relics, more demonic powers. They all look different. That's cool. Different, not different. Uh huh. Ah. Just checking the backs. So let's put this to the side for now. And then they are associated with kings. And then you have powers, some relics. Okay, I'll just scroll through them. Ark of the Covenant, that's cool. Holy Callus. You get a ton of cards. I'm gonna go faster, otherwise you'll get bored. Cool. You get plenty of cards. Look at that. Now, what were these cards? We were also taking a look at them. Um, pacts. I guess these are all packs. Pacts. Master of Worship. Get one worship point for every four worship points you have from treasures, relics, and demonic powers. Alright, yes, so that makes sense. Those things are points at the end of the game. Get three worship points for each set of four unique resources and one darkness you have. Okay, those look like just point-related cards. And now, another deck of cards. Let's go again to the knife trick. Okay. Let's take a look at the back of the cards first. Unique artwork. Okay, and here again the kings. Alright, let's go to the front then. Four darkness. Uh -huh. Alright, these are just talking about the cubes. Alright, these are the action spots where you could either get two pink cubes, one pink cube. Alright, so let's go through them in the back. You have the kings. Okay. Right, again, scrolling through them. They're all very similar, but slightly different. The artwork is neat. A bit dark at times, but that's cool artwork. All right, and here, what do you have on the other side? You have more. Some of them only have artwork. Don't know if that has any gameplay impact or not. That's cool. Those are all the same back as you can see, but on the other side you do have the cubes. 
All right, a lot of cards, I guess. I'll have to read the rulebook to be sure. So I won't put the things in the bags, but let's see how all of this would store. You get a ton of content, I have to say. So you would unpunch these boards. What does it say here? Ah, just the name of the game, sorry, you can't see. Well, trust me, just the name of the game. You would then punch these boards, you could put it here next to those cards. So many content, so much content. All right, you put the coins. I guess you would find a better way to organize once you punch out everything. And I just remove. I'll have to pack that better and send them. All right, I'm really excited to try this one. Goetia, Nine Kings of Solomon. Thanks for watching and watch out for the review on Board Game Geek. Bye bye.